That moon is gorgeous. Fuck. Look, it's almost sunset. How pretty. So lately I've been dealing with getting over desire in order to um, reach my goals and live the kind of life that I want to live. What that specifically means is the way that I would usually get things done quote unquote is by channeling a sense of a uh, lack inside of myself like I really want to do something and want not in a positive sense but want in the sense that um, I don't feel satisfied unless or I don't feel enough unless these actions are accomplished and this has been a habit that I've carried um, ever since I was a kid I felt a really strong sense of um, not enoughness, but not even just psychologically, like I'm not enough, um, but like deep in my body, just a really strong sense of craving. And that was the aura and environment with which I grew up. It's a beautiful bird. Yeah, I was just surrounded by um, unhealthy food and an unhealthy um, psychological environment with regard to uh, the people raising me. And yeah, I developed this really strong habit of just feeling like I'm lacking or that something in the future was going to make me feel satisfied. And I identified with this feeling to the point where I would enjoy feeling this way because I was inspired by the effort that it would take for me to achieve my goals and then ultimately reach this state of satisfaction. And I realized recently that where that leaves me is, <laughs> after 20 years, um, where that leaves me is feeling like I'm not enough day after day after day, um, hour after hour living a life moment to moment where I feel dissatisfied and I feel like a deep, genuinely, emotionally painful sense of lack. And then I only feel enoughness when I do something that I feel that I'm supposed to do or um, I end up avoiding that sense of uh, inner craving by like scrolling on Instagram. Um, by the way, my screen time <laughs> for the last month has averaged at like four hours a day just on social media apps, um, which is an example of this habit, this pattern, this way of being. And I have even been someone who has prided myself on um, not being addicted to anything or not doing any drugs, but yet the addictive aura still remains. I think the majority of kids that I graduated with feel this way, um, who are essentially my peers, you know, people who grew up in the same town at the most similar environment one can have to myself growing up. I've seen a whole bunch of kids my age uh, get addicted to hard drugs, soft drugs, um, like marijuana. Um, I thought it was above all that. Um, not in an egotistical sense, but still. It's interesting how that creeped up behind me. But this is a good news video, because I have found and discovered that and realized that. And now I'm really excited to share my new way of manifesting things. I, I hate that word, manifestation, because it implies being superstitious. 
but in reality I can see like a step-by-step -step process in which um, I have a new psychological habit, a new way that I feel, which then leads to actions that are rewarding, intrinsically rewarding, and then they create intrinsically rewarding results rather than just carrying this really strong sense of I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. And so what that process looks like is first letting go of that habit, of that feeling of lack. I have to, even before that, allow myself to feel that way. A lot of the time I am avoiding that feeling. And so I might just lay down and um, allow myself to feel. And then the feeling will come up and then I'll let it go and I'll relax and I'll take a nap and I'll sleep more than I would like to because I want to get more, more work done, etc. Which is really hard for a lot of um, people who haven't given up on life to do <laughs> because we all want to accomplish more, be more productive, live more incredible lives. And I'm one of those people. And so I would allow myself to feel the feeling and even beyond that, I would let go of the incentive um, or the compulsion to effortfully manifest my goals. And this might sound counterintuitive. How do I manifest my goals without effort? How do I do the things that I want to do without effort? Well, effort is a kind of action and it's action that's necessary, even intense action that's necessary. But action which is rooted in effort is action which is rooted in inner conflict. And so a good example is I'm really scared to do something, but I'm going to push against that fear and I'm going to put myself in a situation where I'm, I'm carrying all of this inner fear and inner anxiety. Um, but I'm forcing myself into a situation, which is something that's glorified by a lot of uh, people in, um, main, in the mainstream, right? I'm going to go do things that make me uncomfortable. And to a certain degree, opening yourself up to uncomfortable experiences is healthy, but there's a difference between that and forcing yourself into uncomfortable situations because you hate where you are in the moment, because you think that that situation is going to be the source of your happiness. A better way to explain the difference is I'm going to be open to the situation this, that's making me uncomfortable versus I'm going to force myself into the situation that's making me uncomfortable and not address all of the inner emotional tension or um, psychological um, negativity that's making this difficult for me to do to begin with. And I have done so many of these things over and over and over again. I remember one time I was so attached to talking to this girl that I had a crush on uh, when I was 17 years old uh, and she had come up in, to me and said hi and, and it was cool and I like tried to force myself to talk to her to the point where I like looked at her and I froze and I covered my mouth because I couldn't say anything and there was just so much inner conflict. When in reality, there was all of this shit that I hadn't dealt with within my own psychology, within my own mind, that had I addressed those things, I would have been more able to open myself up to just having a genuine conversation and a genuine connection. Yeah. <laughs> so watch out for that. And so moral of that prolonged story is um, it's counterintuitive and very emotionally difficult at times to let go of effortfully trying to create a circumstance or reach a goal that we think is going to make us happy or relieve our negative emotions. And for me, the example was work. Effort, work, because I feel lack. So there's the negative emotion, which is lack, and then there's the negative action, which is effort. And then it leads to negative destructive behavior, which is um, me draining all my energy, feeling like shit, forcing myself to do things that I don't want to do. What's the solution? Um, the solution is <laughs> living in heaven um, and not in a religious sense, but in the sense of like, there is this state of being that we wish we were all in where life was just easy. And a lot of people who have gone through a lot of trauma in their life um, and who are preoccupied with a negative frame of mind don't believe that life can actually be easy. But the positive um, counterpart to effort is ease. There are things that we do, that all of us do, 
that are easy for us, that provide a sense of relief, and that are good for us at the same, at the same time. Uh, the best example is sleep. You need to be in a state of ease to get into sleep. And um, you need to be in a state of ease to allow somebody to hug you. You need to be in a state of ease in the same way to be inspired to go to work um, or to follow your life's purpose or to be vulnerable and put yourself out there and make a connection with somebody. Um, effort channels an inner sense of negativity and makes these situations more difficult. And I map this out into everything. Um, what does that look like? That looks like release. You release the effort, you release the uh, negativity, and you root yourself in a state of ease. And at its peak, you get intense action, which looks like a flow state. I remember when I was deeply enjoying uh, training parkour. Again, oddly, when I was 17 years old. Um, that's interesting because both of these anecdotes happened, both of these stories happened within a month from each other, probably. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I was deeply enjoying training parkour and I, had, I was getting moves, I was learning moves and re breaking new barriers that I was extremely proud of and beyond proud of, like elated by uh, breaching these creative challenges. I learned um, a backflip full twist and I learned what's called an Arabian flip, which is where you stand in a forward position and then you start with backflip do a twist and then end in a front flip and I remember there was a certain point where I reached a flow state where I literally felt the universe was carrying my body there was something beyond me that which was carrying my body into executing these moves perfectly and that's the positive extreme of what that is I was so fully engaged in what I was doing and I was enjoying it so much I had such an intense level of action that I reached um, extremely powerful creative milestones in a state of ease. A lot of people are familiar with flow states. That's what I think that is. And what that requires is, again, letting go of any negative um, perspectives that we have that we're associating with whatever it is that we're trying to do. And that's where I'm at. Um, I'll break down the entire uh, detailed version of what that looks like probably in another video. But uh, what that has looked like is one day I'll allow myself to sleep all day. And it'll probably be a day and a half where I end up sleeping all day. And that's really fucking hard for me. To let myself come out of a state of of uh, wanting and to trust that I'm going to be inspired to do the work if I let myself do what feels right for me in that moment and then I end up doing more work than I had done the previous month uh, the day after or more work that I had done within a month's time or two months time and that's what happened today um, yeah, there are, there are a lot more details as to as to how go, how to go about this. We need to address our negative paradigms of reality. Um, we need to understand how to channel positive emotions and let them in, and how to allow negative emotions and to let them go. And maybe I'll make another video about that soon. Um, but if you're someone out there who is really tense and really effortfully trying to make their dreams a reality um, know that that's coming from a place of I don't have this um, this is not something that is real for me and what that's going to do is it's going to create a future where you continually feel like you don't have it and that it's something that it's not real for you and then you're going to continue to take effortful and negative actions and feel an inner sense of lack because we think that in order to manifest what it is that we would really like to experience, we need to f feel negative and like we don't have it rather than we 
rather than feel positive and like we do have it. Um, yeah, so if you're one of those people who has that negative habit, try affirmations and do them to the point where you really believe them and then let the emotion of satisfaction having your goals be a reality um, come to you now and then watch your body relax and let your body relax and allow inspiration to take hold and remember the key is to release effort and to root in ease um, and that's going to be very difficult for a lot of people to do for the first time um, a lot of negative beliefs are going to come up in your mind and you're going to have to address them and if you have any questions about them I can answer them because I ask myself hundreds of thousands of questions about these things <laughs> um, but yeah try it out and uh, good luck I'm gonna add a little story that a lot of uh, Asian kids that may have experienced in their lifetime. It was really emblematic of uh, the kind of psychology that I grew up around. I remember being really excited uh, coming home with a test score when I was like in third grade or something like that. And I got a 97 out of 100 and I was proud of myself and excited and I was excited to show my father and he looked at the test and um, he smiled and he, he asked me what happened to the other three points and that was a lot for me I still remember that to this day I was in like third grade or something and like yeah boohoo me whatever <laughs> uh, that's it, not what I'm trying to do here I'm just trying to explain that it's like that is the kind of mind that I grew up around and that has influenced me instead of uh, seeing the glass as 97% uh, full, he saw it as 3% uh, empty. And th I think that's a lot of where this motivation comes from. It's like, am I going to channel feeling empty in order to get to where I want to go? Or am I going to channel fullness and like live a life that makes me feel full now and um, more and more into the future there are bats that are flying around and that's a completely different mindset because not only do you get empowered to manifest more things because you feel a sense of fullness but you get to feel like you've won and like you're enough and and all that good stuff now you get to feel it now and you don't have to wait um, and you don't have to see life as an addiction or an attachment um, or your goals as something that you need in order to feel like you're enough <laughs> 